Yo guys, it's up Shadow here and welcome back to another episode of Space Engineers. Ah, uh, nice. So today, well, our drill will continue drilling. It's, uh, it's doing quite nicely. The reset is almost upon us, I think. Um, a few more rotations and then it should reset properly and we should get our first depth increase so that's exciting in the meanwhile i will uh start upgrading our little rover over here rover over here oh god jesus what's going on that was a weird lag and I think it shouldn't lag anymore, or it shouldn't lag that much anymore. I have the new graphics card in right now. So it arrived that actually at uh, Tuesday. And uh, Jesus Christ, upgrading that rig was <laughs> a bit more difficult than I thought it would be. <laughs> well, you know, I, uh, I got myself, uh, as I said, the um, 390 Ti, which is a fair bit larger than the 1080 that I had in and my rig so far but that's not necessarily the problem i would say the problem was more that on the slot that i had my graphics card in um the basically the 1080 in i couldn't install the 390 in that slot because there was a component on the motherboard that was just right at the end of the motherboard which the 1080 didn't touch when it was uh, you know um when it was still in there but the uh 390 since it was so large it definitely did touch that component so <laughs> basically the problem then was that i couldn't install it there so i had to move it downwards and then the the, the thing is that I, I had to install a new um power supply since my 750 watt power supply wasn't enough uh for the new setup so now i have a thousand watt power supply in and the one that I had before had the cables already connected to the power supply. So it was a, I think it's called a non-modular uh, power supply. So you only have to connect the cables on the other end. So the ones in the, uh, let's say, in the power supplies, they're already pre-connected. You cannot remove those. The advantage of that, is, of course, is that um, it's basically easier to install because you don't have to think about which cables you need and which ones you don't problem of course is that you have a lot of leftover cables which you don't use which just clog up your your system essentially and get in the way sometimes but the new power supply was a modular one so it had just slots all over the place um and uh you just plucked in the cables you needed and uh then just uh lock them in at the other side where they were needed and you're done that's a cool thing, because, oh, shit, shouldn't, shouldn't do that, because that is one conveyor we need. But yeah, um, the problem with that was that the power supply that went from the, or the cable, rather, that went from the, the motherboard, or rather the CPU, I think it was the CPU power supply, the small one. There's one, a big one, which is essentially for, oh, I... I the wrong conveyor here which essentially is the one that powers the motherboard and then there's a, 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 i think a separate one for the cpu fan i believe and so the one for the cpu fan that was such a short cable that it almost like nearly didn't freaking uh, manage to grab onto the uh, it, it didn't almost didn't match I, I had to, first I had it stretched like right across the CPU fan, which was a problem because it touched the CPU fan and therefore slowed it down. You know, it basically touched the outer edges of the CPU fan, which made a horrendous sound when I started PC. And then I used a, like a like a cable zip tie to uh, to move it a bit so it wouldn't touch. Then it was okay, but my God, I was I was for a short while I was like thinking, oh God. The cable is too short. I cannot. I, 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 I wouldn't be able to start my PC again. Or rather, I would have to put in the old, um, the old graphics card again. That would have been uh, annoying. 
But then I managed to, to, to get it running. Everything was fine. So the thing is, I don't think um, there is a big visual difference, especially in the games that I play at the moment. But it should allow me to, in the future, potentially play all the games that are coming in the future. You know, I'm I'm thinking about playing some Dark Tide, not necessarily on stream or on on, on on the channel. But I was looking at Dark Tide, although there's a lot of bad reviews, mostly like from an ethical standpoint. That basically there's a lot of since the open beta or whatever it was, um, they apparently fixed just a few unimportant box and some really big box are still in but they managed to perfectly and flawlessly implement a, a cash shop with like rotating um you know like special offers and stuff like that which you know if you if you're looking at ethics of cash and microtransaction shops it's quite predatory you have like time limited offers and stuff like that that's extremely predatory and people were not happy so i'm i'm actually waiting for that maybe if it goes on sale i will get it or and that's that's actually a bad thing what i'm about to say or if there's peer pressure and a lot of my friends are getting it and want to play then i might get it as well i might crumble to that peer pressure but we'll see at the moment i'm not not interested so um did we weld everything i think we did let me grab some steel plates and then we'll oh god that was close and then we'll get let's see some light armor panels and just close this up just make it look nice there we go just like that at least on this side you know the sides where the, the containers are at so this should give us a lot more um, a lot more opportunities to to grab iron ore which at the moment is still our most profitable profitable source of um, income and yes indeed um, as you guys were talking about on the last video um, probably getting maybe a bottle of hydrogen might not be the worst idea I always kind of like resist it because I think it's more efficient to to have the inventory um, like em as empty as possible and sometimes I even like empty the drill and sometimes even the, the grinder out of it when I'm building big stuff so I can optimally you know do things but in theory it's probably better to get a hydrogen bottle or two. So we're just gonna we're just gonna try and make a few. Hopefully it's making them somewhere. I'm not quite sure. Might have just moved it to the basic assembler. Yeah, it did. Okay, fair enough. Whatever. All right, um, we're full. Um, I think the vehicle is charged. So, here we go. Fucking brakes off. Do not ram the pillar. Let's go. Oh God, here we go. So it's still not quite resetting, I don't think. Oh, but it's it's really close, isn't it? Look at that. It's really, really close. It must be at like 9 meters or 9.5. It's actually at 10 meters. So let's let's wait for a little while and see if it's if it's doing the reset correctly. Because that's that's basically the big point. That's the point I'm I was a little bit unsure. But I hope I've done it correctly <laughs> this time. <laughs> we'll see. Last time, again, I, I forgot to set the mask resistance to zero on these. So last time when it reached a point, when I, last time when I, I mean when I tested it on my... I basically made a copy of this world and tested it. <laughs> when it did that, it basically just went me <laughs> all the way down. <laughs> that was a bit bad. It should reset probably around there, I think. I'm not quite sure when the um, where the official end of the the loop is here, but it should reset very soon. And then it, I think it should take about 20 seconds to reset or something, because I think it's half a meter per second that the piston is moving. But yeah, you can already see it. It dug up quite a bit here. So that's nice. So that has done that 
in a good way. So it's definitely removing a lot of material, which is good. And as soon as we get to that tasty layer, that's when we are, will be rolling in, in material, most likely. Right, it should reset in a moment, I think. Did we literally just catch it, like, over there when it was... And it extended to 10 meters. Oh, please tell me you're resetting correctly. Didn't I like jump on when it was like over there, the arm? So either it just increased it when I jumped on, or something is going wrong. Hmm. I cannot quite tell. Does it do an extra round that it's not supposed to? It hasn't increased the um, the, uh, the depth piston yet. Hmm. Let me go up here real quick. Uh, look at this and then go look at the timer blocks, I suppose. Radius. So this one is triggering still. This one is has not been triggered. Oh, I wonder if the programmable block kind of like reset it when I when I came in. Ooh, that would be bad if that was the, the case. Jesus. Let's just wait. Uh, well, it just uh, kicked off a new round here. But technically, when we just if we wait here, it should start displaying the uh, the number that it's at right now. But that would be really bad if it if it when we came back in, if it would recompile the code and just keep running it. That would be very strange. So either something went wrong or I've I've done something strange. But it definitely didn't reset. Let's see, setup action. It's just Yeah. Retract piston, that's correct. And then what else? I mean, it should do everything correctly here. I'm not quite sure why it's not doing it. Reset radius. That sounds right. Exactly what I named it. Yeah. So, I'm not 100% sure why it's not doing it. Ah. Oh, okay. Which is weird because... The, again, the last time I checked... It did it correctly. So, I'm not sure what went wrong here. Depth timers have not kicked off. None of them have. And the reset is not doing anything. The radius will trigger in a moment here. So, hold on. If we just wait here, it should put out the, the thingy here in a second. Yeah, it, it reset. It reset. That's very strange. That's extremely strange. So, does that mean every time I load back into the world, it basically resets my, my counter? That's dumb. Oh, man. I guess that means we kind of have to think about maybe changing that program. I believe there is a way where I can potentially check the current radius of the piston there might be a way so i would probably yeah i probably would then at the start of the program when it goes into it and probably will check what's the radius the current radius of the piston and then uh put these uh values into the variables 
might be a possibility. Obviously now it's quite awkward because it basically will run like 10 rounds or tw well, 20 steps in empty before it resets to the depth, which is kind of sad. But I guess it's, it's kind of my fault as well because I, I kind of wrote this program badly. Or rather, I would chalk it up to inexperience with the the programming system. Let's let's put it that way, because I didn't knew it would actually reset every time I load in. I thought it would only reset if you made a change and recompiled it, but apparently it resets as well if you just load into the world again. Which that's awkward. So we have to kind of work around that. And I guess the only way, as, a, as I said, the only way I to do this is probably by basically checking the current length of the not the current length of the piston but the max width so i think it's called the upper limit of the piston every time we, we do so yeah um let's just start loading the stuff we're getting a lot of iron then we can uh, continue to make our workplace safe <laughs> and at one point also we'll you know we'll upgrade facilities we'll add some decorations to the walkway and stuff like that that's all you know coming up soon enough then here go car go yeah that was that was excellent um yeah so that's, I think, the, the move for now. Again, I would love to start building that um, our mobile base. But the thing is with, with that is that I have to basically from the start have the, the base platform with the wheels already pretty much figured out. Because it's quite hard to actually add wheels to something that you already have on the ground. Unless... Unless I put in like a system, like a piston system where I could lift myself off the ground for maintenance purposes. Which would be an interesting thing. Although, I do have to say, I do not quite know what the strength limits of a piston are. So there might be a point where we cannot uh, lift ourselves anymore because we're too heavy. But it would be something for consideration, I suppose. Also, we could combine this piston system with magnetic plates to essentially anchor ourselves in place. Also an interesting idea, you know. I don't know when we would use that, but I guess generally speaking, if we don't want to move, if we're stationary, we could anchor ourselves. It's not like there's like wind or something that can blow us off our position, especially not if it's going to be a mobile base of the, the proportions I have it in my mind, then it's going to be so heavy that nothing is going to move us. But I think it's just a smart thing to have like a, like one of these um, like blockage systems, you know, kind of like cranes and um, certain um, like semi trucks have when they Especially semi trucks that have like a crane system on them as well. They have these little struts they can extend at the sides and then put them down onto the ground so they don't tip over when they lift something heavy. Something like that, you know? I guess that could be done. Right, I think we got a bunch of iron. That's certainly a lot more than we had last time, so. Success, I would say. I mean, we could probably add more uh, cargo containers to this, but we're at a pretty good spot here. We'll see how much we actually collect. Com collected? Connect? Yeah, collected, not connected. We're about to connect to the base again, but uh, yeah. So I guess my job until next time is to figure out how to make sure this program is running smoothly every time we come back to uh, the world when we load in again. So it uh, basically figures out where it is in the whole process. I'm not quite sure. The, the, the figuring out which piston number it is at is probably the hardest. I'll probably have to do some if else or some switch cases. Basically looking at is piston one at 
upper limit 10. If yes, check if piston 2 is at max limit at 10. If yes, check piston 3 and so on. Until he finds a piston, a depth piston that is not at max length. And that is the piston he's at at the moment. Jesus. Today is weird. I don't know why. Let's uh, uh, try to park this bad boy. Ugh. God. This is taking forever. Yeah. Oh god, don't drive into the hole. <laughs> that would... <clears throat> okay. Okay. The wheel is still on. The wheel is still on. <laughs> everything is fine. Well, most everything, I would say. Hey, we have connected. Uh, recharge. Yeah, everything's good. Okay. Uh, Jesus Christ, man. That was strange. Okay. So, oddly enough, Grateful. this didn't get damaged, but this did. <laughs> Okay, I'll have to we'll have to check that in a moment. Um, just add some more to the refineries. Yeah, look at that. We have probably about eleven tons, maybe twelve to twelve to fifteen tons of iron ore that we have collected. That should give us a good amount of steel, I think. And we'll have to fix that in a second. <laughs> <laughs> it's good to know that uh, it's stable enough so it won't, like, uh, you know, destroy a wheel immediately. It basically destroys two blocks here and that's it. That's, uh, that's acceptable, I would say. I mean, we could make this potentially safer by adding more blocks like this, but it's fine. It's fine. Everything's fine. <laughs> Okay, I think we, we emptied everything. Yes, we did. Excellent. And now we should get a good amount of steel going. Yes, now we can really start welding again. Jesus, I I don't know. I I basically put the graphics options on, on extreme. I thought that would work. And it basically goes smoothly, but... The problem is, apparently, every once in a while, it has, like, a huge lag spike. Where it's like, Ugh, I need... Yeah, like that. Why is... Th why is it doing that? That's so strange. And it's not like the graphics card is working at full ca capacity. I can tell. You know how I can tell? Because when the graphics card is really working, it's getting... I don't want to say hot, but it's getting warm. And I can actually feel it with my foot if I go to the... Um, to the spot in where the, the graphics card is at on the case I can touch my foot there and I'm like it's ice cold so it's not working like super hard right now <laughs> it's kind of a good check it's like foot to the right mm, slightly warm the graphics card must be working overtime <laughs> oh yeah okay but yeah there you go you can see now we are getting good amount of steel plates and now we'll be able to uh, make these struts finally be welded and basically make them safe so even if we drive into them we wouldn't destroy anything which is a good good thing right especially if you know my driving skills which you have just witnessed yourself <laughs> but yeah going very nicely oh the sun the sun is visiting us once more. Be nice. It's still kind of weird that it doesn't go overhead, but again, we're on on the. I'm not even sure if we're on the south pole or the north pole. I don't know if you can even tell. I mean, if there would be penguins here, I could tell. Well, I'm not quite sure. I think Arctis has penguins. Antarctica doesn't have penguins. If I remember correctly, I, I can never like 100% remember. I know just one place has them, the other place doesn't. So <laughs> it's a 50 50. But to be fair, even if you don't know that fact, it's always, always a 50 50 guess, I suppose. All right. 
I mean, look, we're almost, almost done. That's neat, though. Everything is going fine. And our little rover has now... Oh! I just realized one of the solar panels is off. <laughs> wow, I am... Um, I'm very observant, as you can tell. Uh, yeah. Okay. That is a... Mm -hmm. That's a thing. <laughs> wow. Okay. <laughs> good thing, uh... Good thing I have a pair of eyes in my head. I was just, like, looking at it, and I'm like, something is off. <laughs> something just doesn't look right. I cannot quite tell what it is. Oh, man, that means I need to make some solar panels. I think it's eight that I need for the small one. Uh, I think we also need some of that. Then some girders, maybe some computers? Something like that. That should be fine. Yeah, now I know why it looks weird. That explains everything. There you go. Jesus. <laughs> oh, yes. That was good. Okay. Let's finish off the struts here. I mean, we could potentially just, like, set the depth, uh, the upper piston lower, but that's also not a terribly good idea. But I kind of like how it looks here, you know, now with the sun, because it's, it's the, the hole is dark, so to speak, because there's not sunlight hitting it, and that looks really cool for some reason. Oh yeah, do we have the hydrogen bottle yet? Um... <laughs> hydrogen bottle. Yes, we do. But we need a little bit of ice. But we can mine that ourselves, actually. It's not a big deal. I think it should fill it when we put some ice in. I think. Inventory full. Go. Eh. Eh. Nice in. There we go. Hydrogen bottle full. So... How much actually weight is it? It's not that much. Okay, maybe, maybe I'm I'm just set in my old ways sometimes. And I I, I was just thinking, yeah, it's not effective, but probably it's, it's much more effective this way. All right. But I think, again, this is good. Now we have completely made the... Uh, oh, almost completely. There we go. Completely on all the pillars so we we desperately have to figure out this thing we have to figure out how this works exactly or let's put it this way we have to figure out a way to make it work when we come back in so it, it basically we have to make sure it remembers its position because otherwise it's never gonna go below this so that's my 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 goal for next time for next week to find out over the weekend essentially to um, figure out how this works and I'm, I'm sure it's doable it's it's definitely doable I just need to figure out what exact commands I need to use in which order to make sure that it recalls its position and then acts accordingly so it doesn't basically um, you know throws a it doesn't throw a wrench into the operations if you know what I mean but again I do like the look already that it gives off Especially from a distance. From a distance you cannot really see the jagged edges and it looks like a nice round cut, which is awesome. I love that. I don't think it, it's giving me any more like resources at the moment, so yeah, again, we have to desperately figure out how it works. Alright guys, I think that's it for today. This time on time. <laughs> and uh, I'll see you all next time. So, take care.